Folks, uh, those are uh, White Lives Matter protesters uh, in front of the Houston NAACP headquarters. That took place on Sunday. The small group of demonstrators held Confederate flags and assault rifles to protest the Black Lives Matter movement. One demonstrator stated that they chose the rights organization for the protest site to bring attention to the fact that the NAACP is one of the most racist groups in America. Black Lives Matter supporters soon outnumbered the so-called White Lives Matter group in the predominantly black neighborhood. Houston police were called in to keep the peace. So exactly what is this White Lives Matter movement? Joining us via Skype from Houston is a lead activist and organizer for White Lives Matter, Ken Reed. Ken, uh, first and foremost, what's the whole point of uh, carrying the Confederate flags when it was General Lee? Uh, who was the leader of the Confederate troops, told those troops to furl that flag and store it in your attics uh, for the rest of your lives. Why are you carrying that in front of the NAACP when that was exactly what General Lee said to the, to the Confederate troops? And I do agree 100% that General Lee did make that statement. But in modern times, to people who live in southern parts of the country, all it represents to us is a form of our heritage. Actually, this is Ken, Texas. Actually, Ken, let me correct you on that. The fact of the matter is that Confederate flag was furled in those attics for at least two generations. You do, do, you, do you know when that Confederate flag was then pulled out? It was pulled out in 1948 when they had, when segregationists had their rally in 1948 uh, to uh, oppose civil rights. You do know when they, wrote, they, they raised that flag on the state capital of South Carolina, it was opposed to, to, us, uh, to the issue of integration. So the reality is, when you spoke of modern times, the reason that flag reappeared in America was because of the opposition to the civil rights movement. That's called a fact, Ken. Well, I'm not, that might be true, but I'm no, talking no, no, about no, for my... It's not might, it no, is, but go no, ahead. I agree. Okay, let's say that. I agree, that is true, but that is not the reason that myself and other White Lives Matter protesters carry it. Well, here's the question. Why are you in front of the NAACP uh, to protest Black Lives Matter? Why, why wouldn't you have the courage to go to a Black Lives Matter organization? You also call the NAACP racist. Why? First of all... I didn't call the NAACP racist. That was another protester named Scott Lacey. So do you, believe, do you believe the NAACP is racist or not? I definitely believe they're biased. Yes, I Bi definitely biased, believe they're biased. Biased for what? Uh, meaning that they, but, but I'm not against them being biased because they're the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. They're supposed to put the interests of their people ahead of the interests of others. No, no but so again, I, again you, you call them biased. How? Because they favor colored people over white people. Do you do you know that the majority of the NAACP founders which came out of the Niagara movement were white? I do, absolutely. Do you realize but not do, anymore. Do, do you real, do you realize that there are white members of the NAACP? I do. Do you realize most there are whites? Of, them, do you realize there are whites? Them, uh, do you realize there are whites on the board of directors right now in the NAACP? Most of them are all liberals, yes. Okay, well, actually, there are, there are many conservatives in the NAACP as well. So the other question is this here. Okay, so you're you're, you're saying white lives matter okay yeah but why would you go protest in front of the NAACP why not go to a white neighborhood why not go to uh another organization why would you go to a black neighborhood in front of the NAACP I'll, if you let me explain I will we chose the NAACP because the NAACP being one of the one of the largest if not the largest and oldest civil rights organization in the United States we feel that they have failed in holding Black Lives Matter accountable and condemning the actions that they've done. What actions? Uh, maybe not. What actions? I'm sorry. What actions? Uh, like, a, well, let's, for example, uh, calling for pigs in a blanket, uh, the attacking of white people up in Milwaukee, uh, where that jet, where a black cop killed a black uh, suspect, a black criminal, and they attacked white people for that. Uh, online, you can go online and see hashtag Black Lives Matter and plenty of threats towards white people. We went to Dallas last month and there was Black Lives Matter protesters there. They threatened to kill us. They threw rocks at us. They spit us and they threatened to rape the women that were with got, us. Got a question for you, Ken. Uh, Ken, where was your protest uh, in support of the folks at Emanuel AME in Charleston who were killed by a white supremacist? I condemn that activity. I do no, not no, no, support no, no, no. what Dylan no, Roof. I asked, where was you standing in solidarity with those individuals? Where were you? I was here in Texas. Okay. Did, did you ever publicly come out and stand out. in protest? Yes. 
I not I might not have been, had an organized rally, Got it. but I did make it known that I condemn that type. That was a random act of violence. It was senseless, and I do not condone it nor approve of it. Ken, you just spoke, you just said that uh, NAACP is biased, and then they are supportive of African Americans. Are you aware, well, do, do you know what Title IX is? I'm sorry? Do you know what Title IX is? I, I have a general knowledge of it, so if you want to go into title, a little bit more depth. Title IX often is referred to as the law that opened the door for women in sports, when the reality is what it did was it opened the professional schools in America for engineers, doctors, lawyers. Uh, and do you realize that white women have benefited more from Title IX than anybody else? Do you also realize that Title IX is a provision of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which was what the NAACP fought for? So the reality is white women who are at your protest are benefiting from the very law the NAACP fought for? Did you realize that? So that makes it okay for Black Lives Matter? No, 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 I'm, no, no, because he, no, I'm, you say it specifically, NAACP is biased. Let me ask you a question. But, I, but uh, I'm uh, not saying no, that. But Ken, let me ask you a question. Are there any white disabled folks a part of your White Lives Matter? Absolutely. Do you realize that the American with Disabilities Act was a result of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which black folks fought for? Are you aware of that? Yeah, yes. Are there, are there, what, are there what, white the women? Point. Are there white women a part of your White Lives Matter group? Well, of course there is. Do you realize that it was Arthur Fletcher Fletcher under President Nixon who created affirmative action and that white women have benefited from affirmative action more than anybody else? NAACP has fought for that. So the reality is the NAACP over their history, they've actually fought for policies that have actually benefited you as a white man. Did you realize that? Uh, we might have been. I'm not saying that didn't happen. I'm not saying that. And we might have been. We might have gotten some fringe benefits. But their fringe? their specific fringe? goal. Yes, meaning this. Their specific goal is for uh, colored people. But yes, white women, disabled people. They all might have benefited from it. Not as might. Well. Not might. They have. Well, they have and it, but they but have but Ken. From it Ken. Well. Ken. Let me ask you a question. Ken, if you actually do, do you realize that Ken, did you go to a public school? Did I, as a child, yes. Yes. Do you realize that public schools were, were not taxpayer financed in the 1800s? Do you realize that it was freed slaves in Texas who were elected to the Texas legislature, which actually put it in the Constitution for there to be publicly financed education? So do you realize that even going forward, the NAACP has been fighting for that? So the NAACP fighting for public education has been fighting for white people like you to get educated. All of that, what you're saying is fine and dandy. But why? It still so, does so not. If, it so still if, does not. So, Ken, are, if, you let, if, are we going to have an interview? Am I going to be able to respond back and forth? Are we going to have a dialogue? Or are you just going to run your mouth and talk over no, me? Well, actually, I'm not running my mouth. I'm citing a litany of facts okay, that, well, frankly is, that frankly is, you to be honest, is. You're not letting me talk. You asked me on here, but you're not letting me speak. So, Ken. If the NAACP has done all of that, done things that have greatly benefited African Americans and whites, how do you call them bias? My point of going to the NAACP is because they are not, if they are going, if they are going to be a civil rights organization and stand up for their people, as it says, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, they should also hold their people and their communities accountable for negative actions and behavior. I got a question, that, Ken. I, I'm not finished. Go ahead. I'm not interrupting you. Go ahead. Just yesterday, the, the, the president of the NAACP in Houston, Texas, got on the, uh, had a conference, a news conference, after we had our protest, and he praised Black Lives Matter and said they're doing great things, they're doing wonderful things. He did not, condone, he did not condemn the looting. They have the right to Who stand looted? out there and Who looted? There's been individual supporters, Black Lives Matter activists and supporters that Ken? have looted since... Ken? Got a question for you. When students at the University of Kentucky led riots, tore up cars, uh, and set cars on fire when they lost the NCAA championship, did you hold a rally condemning them? I called them idiots. No, but did, did, you, did you release a public statement? Did you hold a news There's conference? A no, no, Ken. Ken, I'm asking. Ken. Ken, Ken, did you hold a news conference condemning no. the action of white students because they were mad they lost the basketball game? No, because okay. that wasn't based on racial hatred. Oh no, no, but no, but help. So you, so you want? Was, if so, they were out there. So if they were out there screaming, uh, uh, "Kill colored people" or "Kill the N word" 
or kill Blackie, I would have been out there protesting against that because I'm not against that really? type of behavior. Really? They were out there being stupid and idiotic. But the Black Lives Matter and those activists are targeting people based on the color of their skin. Actually, That's what they're what actually what they're doing is they're actually fighting for uh, rights as well. Let me go to James Douglas, who's president of the Houston NAACP. Uh, uh, James, uh, uh, Professor Douglas, you just heard, you've heard Ken your thoughts and your reaction to what he had to say. Well, it's one of the things he said. We held a press conference yesterday, and most of his actions are based on a lack of knowledge. It's kind of hard to to deal with people when they don't have all the information. So, as you said earlier, the NAACP has always been a multiracial, multicultural organization. We will continue to fight for the rights of all citizens in the United States, and that's all we're doing. If you look at Black Lives Matter in the movement. The movement is not a black movement. There are all races of individuals involved in, in Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is not about racism. Black Lives Matter is to say black people count too. We are also a part of this country and we have rights that ought to be protected just like the rights of whites. So when you hear Ken, when they show up in Confederate flags, which we know is a racist symbol, which we know why it was used, uh, what message do you believe Ken and his supporters are trying to send? Well, I think Ken and his supporters were trying to get some publicity out of it. They came to the NAACP because they knew that the press would be there if they showed up at the NAACP. It was all about publicity. It wasn't about anything else. If you look at if you look at the statements that they profess to support, their, their support and, and the white uh, privilege that they talk about is all about protecting the privilege of white people. It's not about being inclusive. The NAACP has always talked about being inclusive. Ken, final comment. Yeah. Uh, my final comment is, I, first of all, I'd like to ask the president of the NAACP there if he will condemn the actions of Black Lives Matter supporters of burning down their cities and attacking white people based on the color of their skin of, uh, and attacking police officers. I want to know if he condones or condemns that type of activity. Actually, Black Lives actually Matter can, I, can I can actually answer your question. The NAACP, no, I did, uh, but I didn't can, ask can, you, can, can, first of all, it's my show. Let's be real clear. It's my show. My name is on it. So, Ken, the NAACP has commented on that. The national office has commented on that. So you're asking for a comment that's been they done. To denounce the organization. Well, first of all, they have denounced the actions that have taken place. Uh, so, Ken, is that, is that your final comment? My final comment is I believe Black Lives Matter has the right to fight for the, their rights, their lives, their civil liberties here in the United States. I feel that whites have the right to say white lives matter and fight for their rights and their civil liberties and their heritage and culture, just like every people in the United States. Mm -hmm. well, last the I, right to do so. well, last I checked, when 80 percent of the men in the United 80 percent of the people in the United States Senate are white men, we have Fortune 500 companies uh, and you have more than 90 percent. Excuse me, more than 90. Excuse president. me, Ken, more than 90 percent uh, of the folks sit on the boards of directors are white men. Uh, when you also look at the fact that you have right now no African-Americans in the country uh, who are governors of states. Ken, I would ask Ken, I was surprised to say white folks have had it pretty good in America. Uh, uh, since the first Africans arrived in 1619. Ken Reed, we're pre Ken Reed, Ken, Ken, y'all had it pretty good. Ken Reed, we appreciate it. Ken, we appreciate it. Thank you so very much. James Douglas, we appreciate it. Thank you so very much as well. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.